Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about sliding versus tipping. Let's say we have a box here and we are going to move the box. If I apply load at the top, what happens? It probably tips. What happens if I apply the load on the same box but this time more toward the bottom? It probably slides. So whenever we are talking about tipping, we are talking about the summation of moment. Whether the summation of moment is zero or it's not zero. And if we apply the load at the top, then the moment arm would be higher. So it's more likely to tip than when you apply the load at the bottom. Let's draw the free body diagram for this box. We have the weight, we have the load that we are applying, the friction force is acting the opposite way of relative motion, and then we have the normal force. So probably in physics, you've been told that normal force is acting in the middle, but that is not always true. Normal force is actually a distributed loading that is not uniform and we are gonna have a resultant force. So the normal force resultant would be here. And depending on the problem, then we can determine what would be the location of the normal force. Well, usually we consider X. The normal force will act in the middle if there was no force P. Now let's look at the problem. Problem A32. Determine the smallest force P that must be applied in order to cause the 150 pound uniform crate to move. So here we are saying to move. So it could either slide or flips. The coefficient of a static friction between the crate and the floor is 0.5. So let's draw the free body diagram here. I have the weight, I have the normal force, and I'm gonna say this distance is X. I have the force being applied. So here is three feet. The width would be two feet. And I have the friction force. If I have X and Y as my coordinate, I can write summation of uh, forces and moment to see uh, whether this box will move or not. But the movement, as we discussed, is, can happen in two forms, sliding or flipping. Let's look at the sliding case first. So summation of forces in Y will give me that N equals W equals 150 pound. For sliding, I have summation of forces in X equals zero. That means that P should be equal to the friction force or mu n, which in this case, 0 0.5, 150, so 75. So it takes 75 pound to slide the box. This is the force that it takes to slide the box on the, on the floor. But will the box flip or tip before we reach that load? We are gonna find it out by our, our third equilibrium equation, summation of moment. To make it easier, I'm gonna take a moment about this point, point A, because then I get rid of the force W and the friction force. And then I will have a, a balance between the normal force and my force P. So if I write the summation of moment about that point equals zero, the moment of force P would be three, and the moment for force N would be nx. So in this, I have already found p, so 75, and I already know n, which is 150. So what, what, what would be the value of x? 375 over 150. Uh, So that would be 1.5. So 
So 1.5 meter. Let's go to our problem and see what does that mean. The width, the total width is 2 feet and x is measured from the metal. So 1.5 would be beyond our box and that's not possible. So if we apply 75 pounds, we might satisfy our equilibrium equation for summation of forces in x, but the moments will not be zero. So because x is bigger than one meter, half of the width, or we can say x is bigger than w over two, therefore the box flips So we know that the box flips, but what would be the force that it would take, make the box to tip? So let's see if we can find that force. So summation of moment about point A equals zero. But here we don't have the force. We want to find the force that it takes for our box to tip. So we have P, I'm going to call this P tip, the force that it takes to tip the box. The moment arm is the same, minus n, you have the value of n. And then for x, a maximum, for to get the maximum resistance, n, x can be 1 meter. If this is 2 feet, x could be 1 meter a max. So I have to put in 1 meter here, equal 0. This is 150 pound, so I can find the force that it takes to tip the box, which would be 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. So the force that it takes to move the box was 75. P to slide the box was 75 pounds. And to tip the box was 50. You can see that we reached this one first. So the box will tip with 50 pounds. So the answer to the question that it says how much force it takes to move the box that would be 50 pound and if you want to identify whether the box tips or slides we have two way one is that to find the force for sliding find the force for tipping and then see which one is the smaller or go by sliding and then find the x value and if x value is more than the half of the width that means that it can resist because the maximum resistance comes when n is at the edge and we can't go beyond that.